Since the dawn of civilization, it has been the natural instinct and tendency among human beings to protect their families and properties from outside forces at all cost. And this fetish continues to the present day. However, it is now more evolved and more organized. For external security of our country, we have armed forces patrolling the borders to keep enemies at bay. And for the internal security, we have police forces to maintain law and order. But for the corporate world, these men in uniform were not good enough to take care of the day-to-day -day needs. So historically, they have appointed their own chokidas at their offices and factories. These men in uniform, also famously known as Gurkhas, predominantly hailed from Nepal. However, they were not an organized lot. Result, they could not keep pace with modern requirements. Clearly, there was a need for a professional security firm which could provide trained manpower 24 by 7, 365 days a year to the corporate world. And one man, Ravindra Kishore Sinha, saw a huge opportunity here, rather accidentally. His sympathy for ex-servicemen who were jobless saw him setting up a security guard business some three decades ago. Today, SIS Group Enterprises is a leading security service provider in the country. Veena Krishna, who has put this week's story, says, RK Sinha shows that you can make it big by being emotional and sensitive to other people's pain. Take a look at SIS story. You see them at swanky malls in Delhi. You see them at tourist spots like the Red Fort. You see them at crowded places like the Delhi Metro Rail. Meet the men in uniform, but of a different kind, whose job is not only to guard such properties, but also to make the lives of shoppers, tourists and commuters safe and easy every day. And the company that makes it happen across the length and breadth of the country with its 60,000 strong force is the Delhi-based SIS Limited. This 36-year-old company is India's leading security solutions provider offering a wide range of services that includes manned guarding services, private investigations, electronic security systems and cash services. The ability to provide reliable, efficient and impeccable services and that too 24 by 7 has resulted in a clientele of over 2,500 companies which includes Tata Motors, Aditya Birla Group, State Bank of India, Wipro, Hyundai, Toyota, Adani Group and many more. Such an impressive clientele has enabled SIS to log a compounded annual growth rate of 40% compared to the industry average of 20%. Thus, for the year ended March 2012, the company notched a turnover of 2,450 crore rupees and operating earnings of about 210 crore rupees. But like all success stories, the beginning of SIS 2 was not only modest but rather unusual. Founder Ravindra Kishore Sinha began his professional career as an investigative journalist in Bihar. One of his assignments, among many he did, was to cover the 1971 Indo-Pak War. This assignment brought R.K. Sinha close to Jawans. After the war, he saw many army men who were injured and wounded, sitting at home without any jobs. All of them were young and had no source of regular income. The plight of these ex-servicemen moved him. As luck would have it, one of his close friend's manufacturing plants, located at Ranchi, was faced with labor problems and the business had come to a standstill. R.K. Sinha hit upon a novel idea. He asked his friend to employ ex-servicemen to guard his industrial unit and stave off labor problems. The friend readily agreed but asked R.K. Sinha to front it. Wasting no time, Sinha supplied 11 security guards to his friend. Thus was born Security and Intelligence Services or SIS in 1974 rather accidentally. During the same time, R.K. Sinha wholeheartedly supported the Sarvodaya leader Jay Prakash Narayan's movement which was gathering steam in Bihar. This enraged the editor of the paper he worked for and R.K. Sinha lost his job. With no other options, Sinha was forced to turn to the security business. As luck would have it, there was a demand for it. With business slowly growing, R.K. Sinha set up India's first residential security guards training facility at Garwa Bihar, now Jharkhand, in the 1980s. 
Today, its 14 training facilities across 10 states in India can recruit, train and certify 25,000 security personnel per annum. SIS is the only security company in India that offers trained and third-party certified security personnel to its customers in collaboration with IGNU. By 1990s, liberalization brought in the MNCs, embassies, diplomat offices into India. But to cater to these multinationals entered global security giant Group 4S Security Systems. And soon with the opening of the Indian economy, many more flooded the market. 30 years hence, SIS was a 22 crore rupee company in 2001. R.K. Sinha at that point realized the company was stagnating and SIS was unable to meet the heated competition. He needed young blood to run the company. Who else to turn to? But his 22-year-old son, Rituraj Sinha, working as an investment banker at Halifax Bank in London. Rituraj, who had done his business management from Leeds University, realized the huge potential of this business in the aftermath of the 9-11 attack. So without much hesitation, Rituraj agreed to his father's request. Parallelly, R.K. Sena also employed his old-time friend Uday Singh, an industry veteran who had served in senior management positions at companies like Sale, JSW, Mekon and Praxair. What lacked was basically the focus of a, of a professional management the practices like you know annual business planning process annual resource allotment process the performance management process and commensurate uh, compensation review process which are seen by employees as both uh, transparent helping them towards a career growth once those things were put in place uh, they created a major differentiator. But I also feel one of the big differentiator was that a professional manager acquired to head the company was available 24-7. Both Uday Singh and Young Rituraj revamped the business. This security guard company was repositioned as a total security services provider. From 24 branches, the company moved to a 100 branch company. From training centers in three to four regions, it set up centers in 14 regions. Between 2004 and 2008, SIS's turnover started doubling each year. It touched the 146 crore rupees mark in 2007-2008. SIS became a pan-India company. Then came the big turning point. United Technologies Corporation owned Chubb Securities' manned guarding business in Australia of the revenue size of 1300 crore rupees was up for sale in 2007. Rituraj, whose vision was to make SIS a $1 billion company, saw it opportune to buy this firm even though SIS's revenues were a mere 146 crore rupees. But it was bad timing for SIS. The global recession had begun. Private equity players like D.E. Shaw, who promised to fund the deal, estimated to be close to $200 million, backed out. But finally, SIS managed to pull off the deal, which stretched for over a year with major acquisition financed by State Bank of India. It bought the Chubb business on 18th August 2008 and rebranded it to MSS Security. In one stroke, SIS became an MNC with a turnover zooming to 873 crore rupees in 2008-2009 and touching 2,450 crore rupees in 2011-2012. Thomas Berglund, former president and CEO of international securities giant Securitas, who has taken a 3% stake in SIS in his personal capacity, sees great potential for the company. What struck me at that time was that they had the right culture and the right values. They valued the, the, the little man that, and, and woman that is going to help to build a great business. And I think that is the most important starting point. Uh, the, the, the second point is that they, they were very receptive to developing the content of the service they were selling. So they looked around and tried to understand more and more on how to do things. And thirdly, I think the, the 
most important secret on how to, to keep the good spirit and the high quality is to forget that you grow a lot. Rituraj ventured into new businesses with foreign joint ventures, launched mechanized cleaning services in 2008 through a collaboration with world leader Service Master Corporation USA. As the economy continues to accelerate and improves in India, and there is a, a demand, you know, there's obviously an awful lot of cleaning companies in India, and there is a demand by, you know, the big companies, the professional companies for a professional approach to providing the cleaning services. And that is what attracted, you know, SIS to seek you know, a, a professional cleaning company. Uh, and Service Master was one of the leading companies around the globe. It has formed a 51 to 49 cash management services joint venture with the world's second largest security company, Prosigo. It has entered into pest control services with a joint venture with global market leader, Terminix USA. So can the company keep up its scorching pace of growth and achieve its revenue target of $1 billion by 2015? We find founders, 61-year-old Ravindra Kishore Sinha and his 32-year-old son, Rituraj Sinha. But that interview is coming up after a short break. Welcome back. He was an intrepid journalist and his son a successful investment banker. The father-son combined have put the generation gap behind to redefine the security business in the country. My colleague Veena Krishna caught up with R.K. Sinha and his son Ritu Raj one Sunday morning in Noida to find out how they propose to become a $1 billion company. And this is what they have to say. Okay, Mr. Sinha, Ritu Raj, thank you for joining us. Mr. Sinha, if I can start with you. You started out this business uh, largely to help ex-army men. How has this business evolved, you can say, over the years, the security guard business? When, like, I thought of rehabilitating the ex-servicemen, similarly, government also thought various schemes. Very big avenue for ex-servicemen in the banks and public sectors were open. So the situation developed like we had created a market and the ex-servicemen who were in plenty they gradually became scarce because they were getting better jobs in the government and public sectors so to meet the requirement of the market we had to start the training academies train our own people so we were rather not only in india but in the world we were the first to establish a training academy for the security guards. Okay, Mr. Sinha, you were the first to start a residential training center. Do you think still today it is a feasible business proposition? And how do you compare to international giants that are in India? First thing is that need of training was always there. It is still there. It will be there in future. Because training is the major differentiator from a rustic, unskilled, manual labor to a trained, civilized, skilled security personnel. I think, you know, let me also add to what he said. Uh, I think uh, the supply chain that he sort of conceptualized in 1980s and that we have sort of expanded with 14 residential training academies is a huge cost to our PNL today. But the reason why SIS has maintained a compounded annual growth rate in the last five years of over 44% is, is just because we have a greater ability to provide large numbers of trained manpower at short notices. So that's robust supply chain. There could be nothing more important uh, component of our growth readiness than that one piece. And, uh, you know, I mean, the market grew at 20 odd percent. Our competitors have been growing at 20, 25 percent. To consistently outdo the market for five years, six years, back to back, you know, uh, needs that robust supply chain in the sector. I think absolutely that's the backbone of SIS Ops. So training is very fundamental to everything we do. Okay, so Dituraj, you, uh, you know, uh, you seem to be wanting to grow fast. You're getting into pesticides and cleaning management and some people look at it as unrelated how do you answer to that 
our view of the world is that uh, we are in two business of uh, uh, manpower dependent services uh, which are low technology uh, security is a great platform that uh, we built together for the last 40 years now there are some natural extensions we don't see that cleaning in terms of how it operates mechanized cleaning is that that much different from a security operations the way you recruit the way you train the way you deliver the service the the way you manage customers the whole back end is identical it's just that the service that you render varies but the 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 operating mechanism is identical so our idea has been to leverage on uh, the infrastructure that's been created over the four decades to get into related areas of work you seem to be on the verge of an acquisition you are also looking for private equity players you may also go for an ipo is the sector on the radar of pe players no it's more known sector today than it was things have changed since 2004 i think today uh, business support services as a, a services segment is uh, evolving very fast it security business is uh, in india today a 3 billion dollar opportunity facility management is 4 to 5 billion dollar opportunity there are some larger players in this segment now so i would say that private equity interest is much greater than it was 5 years back the number of transactions happening is far greater every 6 months you would hear about a private equity fund investing in this space in fact we were possibly one of the early movers when we got d short to invest into sis in 2007 end 2008 beginning but since then i think there have been several transactions raising funds today is uh, uh significantly easier than it used to be uh, you know 5 10 years back okay okay so rituraj you did an acquisition which was seven times the size of sis what were the challenges there and what gave you the confidence if you ask me frankly my biggest uh, challenge at that point in time was to try and convince him because you know it was quite a I mean if I could use the term wacky it was quite a wacky idea of a Indian security company trying to acquire uh, a company seven times its size in a mature market like Australia uh, and uh, you know uh, we really hadn't acquired anything before that and it was a multi million dollar deal so there were challenges but I think my first sense of confidence came from the fact that when i went and approached him with the idea saying that you know this could be done and there's a good rationale why we should do this i think he didn't bat an eyelid i mean i think i i remember i spent a few days thinking how to put it up to him because you know uh, we would need to basically bet sis india to to uh, to raise the kind of money that we needed to close this deal and i was quite concerned i mean if i was in his place i would possibly be far more cautious but i think uh, you know he he has a great sense of uh, direction and you know uh, he's he's a true blue entrepreneur in that sense so i mean he didn't bat an eyelid and he that gave me a lot of confidence you know you know when he started telling me that yes you should do this and it's you know it it's not about why it's about why not and i think that idea settled in well and then uh, uh, we took into confidence the larger group management team and uh, I think the rest is history. Mr. Sina, what does it take to make it big in the world of business? Keep on working. Keep on working. Don't take rest. Always have am- have ambition. For me it is serving more and more people. For new younger generation it will be creating more and more wealth. But one and same thing. Okay. So Ritu Raj, what does it take to make it big in the world of business? From my perspective, I would say uh it's important to dream. I think uh it's really important to have a larger vision as to what you want to achieve, something beyond numbers. Uh to me that's important, something that you know wakes me up in the morning and you know gets me charged up to go to work and you know do what I do. So I think uh, dreaming is very important. and uh, the other thing you know i've learned is uh, that you're not necessarily wrong because the crowd disagrees with you so you know i mean you just have to have faith in what you think is right and uh, you know sometimes people agree sometimes they don't and you know if 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 you really don't have fair amount of confidence in what your decision is uh, it could get quite confusing at the top which could confuse the future of the business okay So I think uh, clarity of thought and believe in your decisions is uh, is equally important as dreaming is. 
Okay, Mr. Sina, Rituraj, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the message that comes out loud and clear is keep working, don't take rest, and keep dreaming. These are the mantras Sinas implemented to build SIS. Focus on physical training programs. This has been SIS biggest differentiator as they take care of demand supply mismatch. Growth by acquisition. SIS acquired a company seven times its size, gaining expertise through JVs with world-class players. And finally, leverage on existing customers' base to diversify into new businesses. On the face of it, these mantras seem very simple, but it has worked like magic for Sinas. Before I go, here's a pearl of wisdom from the legendary Akio Morita, the man who founded Sony. He said, and I quote him, don't be afraid to make a mistake, but make sure you don't make the same mistake twice. On that thinking note, it is time to say goodbye. Keep watching CNBC TV 18. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.